So, in this um, chapter of food science, in this particular model, let us uh, look at the different types of millets and their individual composition and also study the nutritive value in terms of uh, comparison with cereals and to see the different uh, health benefits of uh, millets and also some recipes in which we can include uh, millets. Millets as you know, they have been here, uh, man had consumed millets from time immemorial and 10,000 years ago millets were consumed, they were cultivated and consumed and if you notice people in the olden days had a more healthier life and a more active and healthier life by consuming a millet based diet than the people of today. Today we are going into more modernization and globalization and uh, aping the food pattern of other western countries and uh, trying to eat their food which is more of artificial food uh, than the traditional and the naturally grown food which is God given and more rich in nutrients than compared to the man made food which is fast food and fast life and uh, probably end life also fast. So, uh, let us have a look in this module on the basic objectives uh, which will enlighten us on the importance of millets and the wide uh, number of recipes in which we can use them. So, the objectives for this module will, uh, this module will enable you to learn about the different types of millets and their nutritive value to learn to prepare recipes containing millets and various health benefits that you can get from consuming millets. Let us see the different types of millets that are there and uh, please remember there are different names, different regional languages offer different names for the millets. So, let us become familiar. There are four major types of millet. First is the pearl millet also known as bajra, bajri, saji, kambu, another spelling is c-a-m-b-u, kambu and sajalu. Finger millet is also locally known as ragi, kevaragu, nachani. Foxtail millet is thinai, koralu and navane. Froso millet, common millet, broom corn millet, hog millet or also known as white millet. Then you have little millet, barnyard millet and kodo millet. These are the common varieties found in India. What are the nutritional value of millets? Millets like sorghum are predominantly starchy. The protein content is comparable to that of wheat and maize. Pearl and little millet are higher in fat while finger millet contains the lowest fat. Barnyard millet has the lowest carbohydrate content and energy value. Millets are also relatively rich in iron and phosphorus. The barn layers of millets are good sources of B complex vitamins. However, millets also feature high fiber content and poor digestibility of nutrients which severely limit their value in nutrition and influence their consumer acceptability. Finger millet has the highest calcium content among all the food grains, but it is not highly assimilable. The protein content in millet is very close to that of wheat. Both provide about 11 percent protein by weight on a dry matter basis. Millets are rich in B vitamins, especially niacin, vitamin B6 or pyridoxine, folic acid, calcium, iron, potassium, magnesium and zinc. Millets contain no gluten. They are not suitable for raised bread. When combined with wheat or xanthan gum, for those who have celiac disease, they can be used alone for raised bread. Alone they are suited for flat bread. As none of the millets are closely related to wheat, they are appropriate foods for those with celiac disease or other forms of allergies, intolerance of wheat etc. 
However, millets are also a mild thyroid peroxidase inhibitor and probably should not be consumed in great quantities by those with thyroid disease. The health benefits of millets, millet is more than just an interesting alternative to the more common grains. Our food ranking system qualified it as a good source of some very important nutrients including copper, manganese, phosphorus and magnesium. Looking at the heart protective uh, benefits of millets, although oats have been widely publicized for their heart protective properties, millet is a grain that should also be included on the list of heart healthy choices because of its status as a good source of magnesium. Magnesium has been shown in several studies to reduce the severity of asthma and to reduce the frequent migraine attacks. Magnesium has also been shown to lower high blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart attacks, especially in people with atherosclerosis or diabetic heart disease. The next important function of uh, millet is the development of and repair of body tissue. This mineral phosphorus provided by millet plays a role in the structure of every single cell in the body. In addition to its role in forming the mineral matrix of bone, phosphorus is an essential component of numerous and other life critical compounds including adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This molecule is known as the energy currency of the body of each cell of the body. Phosphorus is an important component of nucleic acids, the building blocks of the genetic code. In addition, the metabolism of lipids, fats relies on phosphorus and phosphorus is an essential component of lipid containing structures such as cell membranes and nervous system structures. Uh, here you would like to make a more focus on phosphorus because uh, it is the energy currency of the cells and uh, without enough energy production the normal activities of any cell in a tissue cannot go on which means normal metabolism of the daily nutrients cannot be done. Normal functioning of any tissue will not uh, take place, energy will be lacking for tissue function and for the regular functioning of the body, especially the involuntary actions like respiration, digestion, blood circulation, heartbeat, all of this depends on the energy supply within the cell and this in turn is dependent on magnesium, a very important mineral which functions as a cofactor for different biochemical processes within each and every cell in the tissue in the body which gives rise to energy production. So, as we know every biochemical reaction requires a particular enzyme, a particular substrate and a temperature and a pH and unless all these conditions are there in the proper requirement, the normal biochemical reaction will not take place. Therefore, even if a small mineral like magnesium is lacking in the diet, the general metabolism of the cell of the body will not take place leading to a lowered energy level. Millet and other whole grains have found to substantially lower type 2 diabetes risk. Millet and other whole grains are a rich source of magnesium, a mineral that acts as a cofactor for more than 300 enzymes, including enzymes involved in the body's use of glucose and insulin secretion. As you know, unless the glucose that we take in from different foods, whatever food we eat, if it is high in carbohydrate, it gets broken down finally to glucose and glucose has to be absorbed in the bloodstream and oxidized and used in the body by the different cells. 
otherwise extra glucose will get deposited within the liver it will get reconverted to fat and stored and if it is too much the blood levels will increase and it will also spill in the urine leading to glycosuria which is uh, going to be exhibited as diabetes. So, the FDA permits foods that contain at least 51 percent whole grains by weight and are also low in fat, saturated fat and cholesterol to display a health claim stating consumption is linked to lower risk of heart disease and certain cancers. Now, research suggests regular consumption of whole grains also reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes. This is a study done by Van Dam R M Hugh at the diabetes care. Another study, an 8 year trial involving 41,186 participants of the black women's health study uh, research data confirmed inverse association between magnesium, calcium and major food sources in relation to type 2 diabetes that had already been reported in predominantly white populations. The risk of type 2 diabetes was 31 percent lower in a black women who frequently ate whole grains compared to those eating the least of these magnesium rich foods. When the women's dietary intake of magnesium was considered by itself a beneficial but lesser 19 percent reduction in risk of type 2 diabetes was found indicating that the whole grains offer special benefits in promoting healthy blood sugar control. A daily consumption of low fat dairy foods was also helpful lowering the risk of type 2 diabetes by 13 percent. Therefore, we should enjoy a healthy heart healthy breakfast and get the benefits of both millet and dairy by serving a hot bowl of millet topped with low fat milk and whatever is your favorite choice of dried fruits, nuts and seeds. Let us have a look at the recipes which we can make from different types of millets. Ragi adai, this is also known as finger millet adai. The grain most commonly ground into flour is wheat. Flour mills use high protein or hard wheat species to make bread flour and lower protein or soft wheat species to produce cake and pastry flour. All purpose flour is a compromise with medium protein. As soon as the wheat shipment arrives, a grain probe vacuums up samples from throughout the load. If the samples pass quality inspection, the mill gives the truck the go-ahead to dump the wheat onto an underground conveyor. From there, the grain goes into a cleaning machine, where a system of sieves removes impurities such as straw, sticks, and grain dust. The wheat then goes into storage silos until milling time. The protein content of wheat varies by species, so the first step is to blend together the right varieties of wheat for the type of flour they'll be making. From the blender, the wheat goes through a second, more intensive cleaning system that removes the tiniest of impurities, such as weed seeds and dust. On the way to the milling machines, a scale tracks production quantities. This mill's vertical production line is five stories high. Gravity carries the wheat downward through a succession of milling machines. Each one grinds the grain between steel rollers and then sifts it. Particles too large to pass through a sieve continue downward into the next milling machine and so on. By the time the wheat hits the last machine, anything that's not fully processed gets vacuumed up to the top to begin the cycle again. Mills make white flour by grinding only the wheat kernel's soft inner part, called the endosperm. This requires removing the bran, the kernel's hard skin, and the germ, its seed. 
That separation begins as soon as the weed kernels enter the very first milling machine. Rollers break off the German brand and crush the endosperm into pieces called semolina. Sifting removes the germ and loose bran pieces, but much of the semolina remains covered in bran particles. So between each milling station is a purifier, a machine that uses controlled air currents to float the lighter bran above the heavier semolina, enabling sieves to separate the two components. The semolina goes through repeated grind, sift, and purify cycles until it's completely clean. Only then can it be finely ground into flour. The ground semolina passes through a series of sieves. This ensures it doesn't leave the final milling machine until it's been ground to the right powdery texture. There are three main types of white wheat flour. Bread flour has high protein enabling dough to rise well and bake to a firm texture. Cake flour has low protein, which produces a crumbly texture. All-purpose flour is the compromise. Its medium protein content makes it suitable for baking both bread and cakes. By the end of production, the flour mill has produced three distinct products. Bran, used for animal feed and baking, white wheat flour, and wheat churn for the health food market. Leftover byproducts go into livestock feed. In the mill's quality control lab, they bake the product for which the flour is designed and then examine its appearance, texture, and taste. They use specialized equipment to calculate the volume, the density, protein, and moisture contents. With baked goods destined for retail sale, like these cookies, it's especially important to measure the dimensions. If dough overexpands, the cookies won't fit in their package. Just prior to packaging, the mill enriches its white flour with vitamins and minerals. This replaces the vitamins and minerals lost when the milling process removed the bran and germ. They shake the bags to settle the flour. Bagged flour in various sizes goes out to supermarkets, restaurants, and commercial bakeries, while tanker trucks ship bulk flour to large industrial bakeries. What are the basic ingredients? You have ragi flour, 2 cups, onions, 2 to 3 finely chopped, grated coconut, half a cup, green chilies, 3 finely chopped, curry leaves, 2 sprigs finely chopped, Coriander leaves, say or cilantro, a quarter cup finely chopped, salt to taste and oil for frying and you can use water or buttermilk to make the dough. Many of us are familiar with this dish. Let us see the method. Take the ragi flour, chopped onions, green chilies, grated coconut, salt, finely chopped curry leaves and coriander leaves in a mixing bowl. Mix everything together. Sprinkle water little by little, knead to form a smooth dough. The dough should be softer than regular chapati dough. Let it rest, let the dough rest covered for 5 minutes. Heat a griddle or tawa on medium low heat. Take a lemon sized dough to make the adai. Grease a ziplock cover or any plastic cover or a banana leaf. Place the dough ball and flatten it with your palm fingers to about 4 to 6 inches diameter. With more experience, you can spread it directly on the tower itself. Gently transfer the rolled out dough to the hot griddle. Drizzle few drops of oil along the edges. You could also make a hole in the center and put 2 to 3 drops of oil. This will make it extra crisp. Cook on low heat till both sides are cooked. You could cover with a lid to speed up the cooking process and serve hot for best taste. The next recipe includes kambam choru. So as the name says choru means it is a staple like a rice. You make it, it just requires a pearl millet is used here 1 cup, water 2 and a half cups, salt to taste. The method. Wash the pearl millet once or twice, 
soak it in 1 cup of water for about 15 minutes pulse it in a pulverize it in a mixi or food processor a few times so that the grains break down this step is optional but speeds up the cooking process take the broken millet remaining 1.5 cup water and salt in a pressure cooker cook for 4 to 5 whistles let the pressure go off naturally it takes a little longer to cook than rice next recipe ragi kuri paniyaram ingredients are ragi idli butter 2 cups oil for frying for seasoning or tempering you can use one onion finely chopped green chilies one finely chopped curry leaves two springs finely chopped oil two tablespoons mustard seed half teaspoon chana dal one teaspoon urad dal one teaspoon aspartida quarter teaspoon and other optional ingredients are grated coconut and carrot the method heat oil in a skillet and fry the mustard seeds chana dal and urad dal add the aspartida chopped onions chopped green chilli and curry leaves saute for couple of minutes and switch off add the tempering to the ragi batter and mix well if you wish to add grated coconut or carrot mix that is that also along with the other ingredients heat the kuri paniyaram pan or a puffed pancake griddle over medium heat pour few drops of oil into each hole pour enough amount of batter into each hole let it cook on medium low flame you can also cover with a lid to ensure uniform cooking after about 2 minutes flip the paniyarams with a fork or a skewer drizzle some extra oil if you like it crispy cook till both the sides have brown spots serve it piping hot with some spicy chutney for the best taste next is a ragi vadai so we are familiar with a lot of vadai recipes includes a lot of pulses and dals which increases the protein content of the diet so this is one version where we are incorporating ragi flour the ingredients are ragi flour 2 cups onion 1 chop spinach 1 cup chop uh, chili powder curry leaves uh, cilantro a few salt to taste oil for frying you can see here we have added uh, spinach so that it can enhance the nutritive value so you have fiber from spinach and some b vitamins and all of this giving it's a simple a different like a kira ragi vadai in a bowl add ragi flour spinach onion chili powder salt curry leaves cilantro and mix well after add the required water and make a soft dough like chapati dough heat oil in a pan take a small amount of dough press it with the help of fingers and drop it in hot oil fry till it turns into crispy or till the bubbles are almost stopped kambu dosa small variation of the regular dosa where we are adding pearl millet known as kambu or bajra so you take 1 cup of kambu then rice which is raw rice or parboiled quarter cup fenugreek seeds half cup salt 1 teaspoon method wash and soak the pearl millet rice dal and fenugreek seeds and soak it together in enough of water for at least 2 hours grind it to a smooth and fluffy batter with the salt and required water let the batter ferment in a warm place for at least 6 hours heat a griddle and add 2 to 3 drops of oil and wipe it off with a clean kitchen towel pour a ladle full of batter in the center of the griddle and spread it into a thin crepe using the back of the ladle drip 1 teaspoon of oil around the edges of the dosa when the edges are cooked you will be able to remove it flip it and cook the other side too we can see the varied use of millets in everyday diet 
so that we can have so many added nutrients like fiber, vitamins and minerals which are so much lacking in our otherwise daily diet and we do not have to take supplements or the regular tablets uh, mineral or vitamin supplement to enhance the uh, nutrient intake in our diet and therefore by using all these locally available millets and a variety of uh, cereals also in a different combinations we can increase the intake of uh, essential amino acids uh, which are very very required for body's uh, tissue growth and uh, repair of damaged tissues and a building block for so many other protein based uh, substances in our uh, body. So, let us use this wisely and incorporate it into each and every dish. If there is a will, there is a way and definitely you will be able to use uh, this millet in a very uh, innovative way to increase your uh, homemade cooking into a very nutritious and healthy cooking not only for you, but for the entire family.